Hello. In this segment, we will discuss how the neuron excites the muscle cell to contract. It's called excitation contraction coupling, EC coupling. Okay. So your excitation contraction coupling. This occurs in the energy in the, in the uh, neuromuscular junction. If you remember, this is where each muscle cell, so here is, is a neuron coming to the muscle cell. So, your, so here is your motor neuron. That neuron will contact the muscle cell at what's called the neuromuscular junction, the NMJ, neuron muscle junction. So here in the neuron, of course, you have your typical uh, NT, it's always ACH, ACH, acetylcholine, is the, the neurotransmitter that, that's stored in the knob of the motor neuron. Then on the muscle cells, you have your ligand gated channels. These are LG channels that respond to ACH. All right, so, so, so let's, work, let's just see how, how, what happens at the NMJ to, to allow for the neuron to cause the muscle cell to contract. All right, step one is the action potential arrives at the axon terminal. So your step one, your AP arrives. Okay. Step two, as you know, whenever an AP arrives at an axon terminal, calcium enters, there's no surprise here, right? Calcium enters the cell. That's step two. Calcium enters the synaptic knob. Then step three from here, is what will happen here is now the ACH will be released. Okay, so step three, ACH is released. Acetylcholine is released from the neuron. Then step four, the ACH binds to the ligand gated channels on the muscle cell. Step four. Step four, ACH binds to ligand gated ion channels on the muscle cell. And that will cause sodium ions to enter the cell. Now sodium ions enter. Step five, so step five. Sodium enters the muscle cell, okay. which creates a local potential to create a local potential. Then step six is LP, local potential caused by the NA influx, will generate an action potential in muscle cell. So here is step five, the action potential is generated. So step six. And then in your muscle cells, you have these specialized areas called T-tubules. T-tubules where it's like a tube that crosses the cell. And so as the action potential spreads along the muscle cell, eventually the, the, the electricity from the AP will spread into, into the T-tubules. Okay. So step seven, 
and I'm able to erase, erase and, and keep going here. So let's keep the image in front of you. So in step seven, action potential spreads into T tubules. Again, these are called T tubules, transverse tubules. T tubules is is like bridges across the cell. And so then as the wave of electricity spreads across the cell through the T tubules, it will then activate these these um uh, uh, SR called sarcoplasmic reticulum, which are in the vicinity, these these SRs, this SR, sarcoplasmic reticulum, SRs, their job is to store calcium. So here you have calcium hanging out inside these things. Calcium. Okay. SRs store calcium for you in the cell. And so when the electricity comes through here, it will open up gates on the SR to release calcium. So step seven, the electricity comes through, and then step eight, calcium is released from the SR to enter the cell, okay? Calcium release. So step eight is SR will release calcium. That's step eight. And then, once the calcium is released, then if you recall, remember that your um, actin molecules can only bind to myosin if the troponin is there attached to calcium. So now, the CA that's released from the SR will bind to troponin, which will then unblock actin to allow for your cross bridge to form, and there you begin your cross bridge cycle. So that's, that's, that's step nine. Step nine is calcium binds to troponin, which on blocks actin and then step 10 myosin myosin binds to actin to begin your cross bridge cycling that's step 10 is right now. Okay, and that's how it is. That a neuron is required, an action potential is required, a nerve impulse is required to travel down the neuron to the NMJ to open up ligand channels that will create an action potential in the muscle cell that will eventually trigger the SR to release calcium to bind to troponin which will unblock actin to allow for your myosin to grab it and begin your cross bridge cycling, and therefore the muscle will shorten. That's called excitation, contraction, coupling. And this only stops when you are able to pump the calcium back into the SR. So this ends, step 11, cross bridge cycling ends when Calcium is removed back to the SR, removed to SR by usually by ATP pumps. So this process is called ATP as well, to pump the calcium back into the SR. That way you can then block the actin again and the muscle can relax that way. Okay, we'll pause there.